Welcome back to Naval Action and episode 53 of A Letter to the King. If you're new to the series, bloody hell, you're 52 episodes behind, but apart from that, um, this is my attempt to keep you up to date with what's going on on the Euro PvP1 server in Naval Action. So let's jump right into it and see where we were last week. Um, so the US had been pushed out of the west coast of Florida. The Danes had moved in to the island chain. The French had held off multiple attacks across the north coast of South America. Uh, the Brits had snuck into Trinidad and Pap and Les Kays had been defended uh, after more multiple attempts. So, what is a happening alliance-wise? Well, they're set in stone. In fact, they're so set in stone that this lot here, the Eastern Alliance, are buggering off to their own server. So, as a result of all sorts of things and how to deal with night flipping, uh, the devs have decided, and this is probably in conjunction with a few other moves, to trial the notion of two new servers, a Eurocentric server, with a time cap on when you can do port attacks. So essentially it's only going to be within a, I think a 10 hour window is the proposition. Um, and basically that will be, um, I guess, mid morning through till about midnight European time. And a global server, now I'm hoping on the global server, um, there's no time lock at all. I have heard of talk of a time lock, but that would be preposterous. Uh, more on this a bit later. Let's have a look at what was going on BIFO-wise. So first of all, the Americans were assaulted at uh, Grand Bahama by the Swedes in a shallow water, sorry, by the Danes in a shallow water uh, battle. And uh, actually, I think this was, no, this was Swede-led. Yeah, yeah, this was a Swede-led flag. Um, and I have to say that the Americans, uh, since the announce of the split and subsequently, and I'll get to this in lots more detail later on, the announce of the wipe, uh, have decided to go and play Grand Theft Auto or something. So um, not a great deal of resistance from the US forces. Um, some of the guys I know who are battle commanders uh, are having a bit of a break, as are many other players, to be honest. Um, so for the same reason, um, uh, the, the, the port here, Gasparilla, also fell, um, and then last week and this week, um, Islamadora, possibly for the last time, who knows, there may be a band of hardy chaps who fancy going back after it, but the port that's probably changed hands the most times this war, uh, fell out of American hands and fell into victorious Spanish hands. The Dutch had a bit of a fluffy attempt at Caracas. Um, they barely got a full fleet together um, and basically it was free BPs for the Frenchies. Um, the US, this was in a Euro time zone, so it's predominantly Euro players, uh, then held uh, Los Lanas from a attack uh, by the Danes. Actually, this was the, I've got this one wrong. This is the attack of the Danes on Andros. Uh, which was a win to the Danes. Um, and then a little bit later, uh, the de the weekly attack on the Windward Islands uh, by the Frenchies was repelled by the Brits. Um, and then probably the most exciting event of the week, the Danes, almost out of nostalgic purposes, before they wander from the server, decided to have another crack um, at the Brits up in Bermuda. And uh, this is one that uh, one of the Danish captains has on his uh, channel. Uh, it's actually a pretty good battle, to be honest. And the um, uh, I think in the end, it was something along the lines of 15 Danish ships were lost to about 10 British. Um, the Danes did have a little bit of bad luck in that um, one of them DC'd. And when he came back in, essentially, he was escaped. And perhaps one of the funniest things I've seen in a port battle, mostly because it didn't happen to me, is that one of the Danish captains, when he was sort of almost half run aground, uh, he, he just won a boarding action and he was pretty much butted up against uh, the shallows. 
and his own AI fleet ship essentially turned into him, flipped him, and capsized him. So that's a, a spot of bad luck. But this was actually a really good battle, um, and, and every time the Danes have come to Bermuda, um, they've put up a cracking battle. I think the Brits won this about 15 ships to 10 in the end. Uh, but the Danes were pressing for 75% of the battle. They really were pushing the cause. And perhaps without the DC and without the um, hilarious capsize, watching a first rate being capsized by another first rate is, uh, it's physics in action, to be honest. Uh, they, they, they might have, have, have snagged this up and, and sort of that would have been a real empiric victory for them in a war that we will never know the end of. Um... The Americans then had to defend, what's this now, Los Lanas, Remedios, on the north side of Cuba. Uh, I think there was a fair number of allies in this one too, and they held off the Spanish there. Um, the Brits then had to repel the Spanish at Trinidad, and, and that was done fairly easily. And the Spanish then held off the, a Dutch raised flag uh, against the little islands here, which uh, Islad... Uh, penis or something who knows uh, and and that was it and you'll see here I've kind of gone through that real quick but there's a reason for it um, many of these battles were a little bit half-hearted uh, two weeks ago there was 31 battles on PvP one this week there were nine of which three were worth being part of and the rest were all fizzlers um, and it's basically because a wipe has been announced, the splitting of the servers has been announced, and so for the next two or three weeks, um, there'll be very little going on. I'll still put up a letter just to let you know what's going on, um, but don't expect there to be any amazing tales, unless perhaps there's some splendidness. There could be some splendidness. I must advertise and jump on the forums and go in the general section. There is a chap, a well known captain who runs what he calls Small Battles, so he uses the game's um, lobby system. Now, Small Battles means you lose a durability. Um, but once a day, he, he, he runs Small Battles, often gives out prizes. Um, they are good fun. Uh, they tend to be in the, in the middle of the Euro TZ. Uh, and I know that last week he ran a couple where the Small Battles were actually large battles. They were first rates and the likes, so well worth... Uh, having to go out you've got to remember you're going to lose all your ships in three weeks so there's no point in hanging on to timber um, there's, as you see there was only nine port battles there's very few there's very little activity on naval action while we wait for the great wipe um, they, uh, there's a bit of a trick for the devs here. they have to give everybody everybody notice but sort of in doing so they give us all a bit of a holiday too so that's a thing. Uh, check up the small battles. They can be really good fun. If you've never really had any big PvP, um, jump in, pick a side, jump on TeamSpeak and have a laugh. Because it is just a laugh. And you're going to lose a, a durability or even your ship if it's only got one dura. Where will the Biffo be next week? Who cares? Who cares? There might be lots of ganking going on. That might be about it. Um, numbers are down by 50%. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, numbers are down by 50%, um, at least 50%, just in the last five days. Um, I was on my Saturday lunchtime, just pottering around in a trink, having a bit of fun. I've got this beautiful blue trink omelet. Um, and there were 44 people online. There was more. I was watching a stream on my other screen, a bit of Blood Bowl. There was more people watching the stream than there were online. Uh, on naval action, so uh, we've uh, we're all buggered off uh, to other things. Um, so let's have a look at what is really very much the final uh, tally of Splinter's Sail and Blood for this third war on Euro PvP One, and the last war I'll be covering on Euro PvP One because I'll be moving to the global server, which essentially means I'll be staying still. But I'll, I'll, I'll be I, 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 a few people accused me of bias in last week's video where I was. Uh, pretty much anti the uh, Euro server and pretty much pro the global server. And that's because I live in Australia. So I am biased. I, I, I did try and present both sides of the argument. I do understand those people who want to not lose a port when they're asleep. I honestly do. Um, 
but I live in a far-flung corner of the world. I'm neither in the US primary time zone or the European primary time zone. So by definition, all of my online gaming is awkward for me. Um, there isn't enough down here in Asia to um, support a naval action server. And even if there was, it wouldn't be English speaking because the vast majority of Asians tend to speak Chinese in this part of the world. And uh, my Chinese, uh, I've only learned enough uh, to tell my wife she's beautiful and that she's right and to apologize for whatever I've done. Um, and you've also got to be very careful with Chinese because um, it's a language based on pronunciation, something that you can imagine coming from the north of England is a, is a challenge. So the word ma, depending on how you say it, can mean it can turn a sentence into a question, as in ni hao ma, where ma means how are you, rather than just hello. Ma can mean mother, and ma can mean donkey. So that can get you into problems really, really quickly if you don't know how to use it. So not being a, a, a true Denzian, of the Chinese language and um, playing on a Chinese language server would be a bit of a turn off for me. So I have to find servers where I can live with the ping in a zone that I can get the most play out of. And given the split in naval action, um, letter to the king will be coming to you from the global server. And I'm very sad to see the back of our uh, Spanish, French, Danish and Swedish captains who choose to go to the Euro server and any of the allies and pirates who choose to go to the um, Euro server. I hope one day we'll all be back on the same server when some magic devness has happened to fix things. Um, I know lots and lots by name, sometimes by conversation, of all of the enemies that I've fought against and... Um, you know, the French at the start of this latest war were probably like the Dutch are now. They were a little bit disorganized and struggled to put a fleet together. By the end of it, the French can put a splendid fleet together. The Spanish, who slept for the first half of this war, um, have now can now, in, in, in almost one clan, can field um, almost a full and functioning and well-led uh, fleet. The Swedes, who were possibly more active at the start of the war, became the fourth-rate kings for a little while. And, of course, the Danes, uh, probably the most aggressive, and certainly from the Allied side, the most feared, not feared as in phobic, feared as in we know their competent fleet, um, with the punch-you-in-the-face approach to port battles. Getting a brawl with the Danes, you're probably going to lose. Uh, and I'll miss them all. I'll miss them all on Global. Um, I hope you find what you're looking for on Euro PvP 1. And I hope one day the devs come up with a solution where we can all play together and kill each other in blissful harmony. So let's have a look at the tally of Splinter's Sail and Blood. Um, so the British win. Uh, I think that's what it tells you. Unless you add up the ports of the various alliance, in which case the Eastern Alliance wins. Uh, unless you look at the Delta from the starting position, in which case the Western Alliance wins. But I think we can say in this third war, nobody has won. It is, um, what would it be, Combat Interruptus, um, be it Module Gate, be it Night Flip Gate, be it uh, the need for the devs to test and reset stuff. Uh, whatever the reason is, we will never get to the end of this one, which is a pity because it was a very even battle. Uh, about eight weeks ago, I thought the Western Alliance were going to push the East, Eastern Alliance over. But just as I thought that, um, Castries fell and new wind was blown into the Eastern Alliance sails. And to be honest, since then, they've been on the front foot and the Western Alliance on the back foot. So it's a pity. It's been a good war, as, as, as well as wars can be. And let's just move on now to the Great Wipe. So, the Great Wipe has been announced. Um, generally being welcomed, I think most of us know that with um, various bugs in the game as we've been testing our way through Alpha and whatever we're in, Beta, Alpha, uh, most of us know that there's too much money around. Uh, those that have, have too much. Um, module gate, who knows how long it's been lasting. 
Um, there's far too many modules around. If you're a captain without golden carpenter teams and you're up against a captain who's got a bag full of carpenter teams, you're in trouble. Um, so the Great Wipe is coming. Uh, the 19th of April is the current date. It'll be um, happening on the 19th, back up on the 19th slash 20th. So remember, this is dev speak. All of this can move. And it can change. So what do we get with the Great Wipe? After we have wiped, what is there left? So the sundering of the servers. Uh, the Euro server, which will have a time clock on it. The global server that won't. We've spoken about that at length. Um, there's going to be a new element of the map. I think I've beautifully mapped this in, incidentally. See what I did there? Um, these areas here are going to be PVE areas. They're going to exist on both servers, on both the global and the Euro PVP server. Um, and essentially these are zones that uh, you can't fight other captains in. So it's a lot of real estate, I have to say. Remember, this is a noob area. It doesn't leave as much of the map to scrap over. Um, and as, as far as I know, this, these PvP ports don't cover all nations, so I'm not quite sure what a uh, PvE, sorry. I'm not quite sure what a Swedish captain's meant to do. If he wants, maybe there's no PvEers in, um, in Sweden, the hard, hard, hard men since the Viking era. And the notion of PvE is beneath them. I don't know. I don't know. Um, there's no French area either. So oh, there must be a French area. New Orleans is a Frenchy area. But anyway, I, I'd have thought they need to give some ports so that every nation has some ports. Maybe break some of these regions up. There's lots of ports around here. Um, so that some of our... Every nation should have a PvE port if we're going to have PvE. I don't know about PvE on the server. Um, essentially, this gives me an area where, say I want to do some crafting, and I don't want these people to biff me up every time I sail around my beautiful KPR area. I could decide to set up a port over here somewhere where there's lots of nice, sexy stuff. Uh, I know, for example, um, I think it's the Dutch or the Spanish. There's also the British Germans. They all sort of craft and trade around here. Um, I know the Brits currently do a lot of crafting around here. Um, so I don't know about having PvE. I, I'm, I'm more than happy to try it. I would have kind of liked it if they'd have gone on the other side of the coast, but the devs say that's a little bit bullshit because that coast really wasn't developed, and that's, you know, kind of true. Um, or they could have opened up further down to Brazil, where that was certainly opened up. I mean, the conquistadors opened South America up. Um... But, but I don't know, for whatever reason, they've decided to do it here. Um, now, what it does mean is, of course, we'll have a bigger population. We'll have a bigger, essentially, the PVEers can um, daringly step out of their purple little bubbles and, and, and make lots of money by trading with the PVPers. Of course, in doing so, they risk getting slapped, so they might not want to. But it would allow them, if they wanted to, to have a little toe in the, the shark-infested waters that is PVP. Um, I, I'm, I've i never really PvE'd naval action, so I don't really know how engrossing it is and how how horrifying it would be to step across this imaginary line and then there'd be all these nasty people ready, waiting to biff you up. I just imagine flotillas of ships waiting for folks, you know, be a bit like in the... Um, in the Arabian Gulf, in the Persian Gulf, where you accidentally sail into Iranian waters and immediately you've become a prisoner and, you know, you're now part of some trade swap. Um, I, I'd imagine very much the same thing's going to happen. As soon as you step out of one of these bubbles, we're all, we're, those PVPers are going to get you. Uh, a special alarm will go off and we'll all come down and seal club you. Anyway, look, let's see how it goes. This is a, a valid bit of testing. It's a lot of real estate. Uh, the devs say nothing much happens here. Um, there's a lot happens around here, to be honest, with the Brits and the Spanish. There's always ships around here. Come out of um, come out of Bensalem while you're reading a book. See how long you last. Not at all. Right now, you'll last okay. There's like 27 people online. But when it were busy, see how long you, uh, you'd last. Um, sail around the, uh, the free ports up here without paying attention. See how long you last. Uh, but it'll be okay now. You'll be safe. You'll be in your pink bubbles. So the Great Wipe, 
First of all, a bit of clarification. What is wiped? Everything. Everything's wiped, apart from your crafting XP and your level XP. So if you're a Commodore, you'll still be a Commodore. If you're a Rear Admiral, you'll still be a Rear Admiral. If you're a level 50 crafter, you'll still be a level 50 crafter. So that's good news. Uh, but essentially, you'll have to recreate your character. Now, this is uh, not necessarily a bad thing if you named yourself Bill Jones 1234. And you've realised having your real name and birth of date date of birth in your character is a is a is a folly. Um, if you were in a clan, all the clans will be disbanded, so you'll have to recreate your clan. This is an opportunity to rename your clan. Um, all our BPs will be gone. That's a bit tragic. Having worked so hard to get my BPs, this is probably the thing that's hardest for me to swallow. Having to make bloody Briggs and third rates again so I can get lovely Bologna and Constitution BPs back. We will start with four or maybe five. I'm not 100% sure what the deal is there. So we're all going to get a sexy new uh, frigate um, whose name I knew until uh, just about five seconds ago and now I've gone and forgotten it. Uh, but, we, woo, but we will um, let me see if I can find it. Now I've Given away all my secret details. Um, let me see if I can find the name of the sexy new ship that's part of the Great Wipe. It's not the Dolphin. What could it be? It's a frigate. It is the Pandora, that's right. It's named after Blizzard's um, terrible expansion where they added pandas of all things to World of Warcraft. Um, interesting that they named a ship now it's a frigate by all accounts it's a lovely frigate and we'll be getting it as specials because we're testers and we are deserved of a special ship that no one else can have so this will be our little EP prestige ship don't know if we're going to get one to sail around after the wipe but we're certainly going to get four redeemables I don't know if any of you have logged on the test server but it's a bit like that essentially when you log on the test server you create yourself a character but rather than starting off with nothing it chucks your four ships, basically a ship in each of the levels, uh, uh, a, a, a little ship, uh, a fourth rate, and I think a second rate from memory. Um, they're okay. Of course, they'll all only have one durability, because that's a change. And we'll get all the new stuff that's on the test server. So read the test server patch notes, keep up to date with those. So there's things like the structural integrity of the ship and the Admiralty shop where you can trade sort of virtually earned admiralty points for various things um, and if it's like the test server you'll start with a, a piffling amount of money but enough money to get you going maybe stick some cannons on your ships um, but it's not all bad so how would I prepare how have I prepared so if you're going to change nations um, now's a good time now I know the chaps on what will become global server are going to have a bit of a meeting on the 1st of April. That can only be a harbinger of good things that we choose April Fool's Day to look to our future. And we're going to have a chat and work out how we um, how we create um, or try and work out. We'll just have an argument, to be honest, and talk about how much we hate the French. But in theory, we'll be planning on how we split the existing meagre players that will be left on Global so that we can get a bit of a biff. So I don't know, maybe some of the Brits will, will go Spanish or some bloody thing, who knows. Um, we'll have a chance to make, and the same will be if you're on Euro PvP 1. Um, the Alliance will have to sunder itself, and maybe it'll be France and the Swedes versus the Danes and Spains. At least that will rhyme, wouldn't it, the Danes and Spains. Uh, the Spains, you could do that, S-P-A-N-E-S -E versus the French and Swedes or the Swench. So there you go, there's a bit of a tip to get you started on Euro PvP 1. Um, everyone will be brought back to an even keel. So there's a great, if you, if you just bought Naval Action, say, three or four weeks ago, um, you wouldn't have that 100 million gold like I've got because you've not been playing long enough and I've had all the opportunities to take advantage of crazy bonker delivery missions and things like this. So we'll all go back to an even keel. There won't be the gold players and the regular players. You'll have to work out how are you going to make your money. You're going to do it through biffing, which carries the risk of losing your ship. 
do you do delivery missions? I'll, 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 I'll maybe do a little thing in next week's Letter of the King as to how delivery missions work uh, to give you a bit of a clue. So there's some good tips on how to make money from delivery missions, especially if you're working with a friend. Um, you can really bash through them quite quickly. Um, and if you're going to craft, where will you set up your base? And how, how do you work out where to set your base? So those last two dot points I might use as things to talk about in the next two Letter to the Kings, because I can't imagine there'll be many port battles. So I might first of all cover delivery missions, and then I might talk about how do you work out where to set up to craft. Um, and that's it for this week's somewhat limited as far as blood is concerned, naval action. Um, keep up to date with it. We're all going to be on break. I'll try and keep you up to date with where we're going. I'm pottering around on my alt at the moment, having great fun. Um, on my own. Got the whole Caribbean to myself. and the king of the world. King of the world. Anyway, thanks for listening. Give us a like, give us a subscribe. And I will see you probably in World of Tanks. Cheers.